I always wanted to be part of Ragni di Lecco, but uh, I never really asked anyone to, to become a, a member. It just happened. So I just met uh, the right guys. One of them was Fabio Palma, the current president. And they proposed me and I was uh, really happy to, to join this group uh, because, uh, of course, I've always heard about uh, all the big climbs they've done all over the world. And uh, it was also a, a great chance for me to grow, meet other people, and a uh, big chance to, to go on expedition and explore different parts of the world, the world rather than the Alps. Matteo is uh, one of the more important guys and climber of all the history of the group. I think it can be considered as Casimiro Ferrari in 17 and 8 years ago, so a leader that have uh, great ideas and these great ideas also push all the group to have good ideas. Since I have uh, been part of the group, uh, um, I did several expeditions uh, to Patagonia. For me, Patagonia was a really love at first sight. We heard about this uh, wall, the west face of Torreger, that apparently was uh, maybe the last uh, big wall in Patagonia still unclimbed. And uh, I mean, we saw the picture of this face and we thought, oh, man, that's awesome. We, we got to go there, we got to try. And so we did. I mean, even if we didn't really know what uh, we were going to do, because we had never been there. Uh, but we went there with, uh, with this big goal in mind. We tried and, uh, uh, and that's how everything started. The route itself uh, is, uh, it starts uh, not very hard, but then it gets quite sustained, very steep. We did the free climbing up to um, 7A, more or less, and then we did some aiding. Uh, I'm not an aid climber, so I don't know, maybe like A2, C2, something like that. And then, uh, and then yeah, a lot of free climbing, crack climbing 6C, 7A. And then you have the ice mushroom at the top, so you, you got to take with you all the ice gear, which is a lot of weight, just for climbing a couple of uh, really nice pitches on on this, uh, this uh, unique uh, ice formation. Um, the line we chose is quite exposed to, to the ice falling from the top, so we also got pretty scared of uh, yeah, some ice fall and stuff like that. And then, you know, the weather in Patagonia is, uh, is usually pretty bad, so the chances you really have in, during a season uh, might come down to, to very few days, so in those days you really need to, to climb well and, and take the maximum of, of this good weather. We spent uh, uh, like uh, three years before succeeding and the total of uh, like 150 days divided in three years of trying and we just succeeded at the very end. So the result was really uncertain until, until just before we had to leave. I think uh, the west face of Torrega was a climb that um, represented like a turning point for our group because it was uh, several years that the group was uh, kind of sleepy, so nothing big was happening. And uh, there, was, there was some movement, but uh, uh, this was like a, a big achievement since many years. And that I think uh, encouraged and inspired many, many people, many young guys to to go in the mountains. A few years ago, after completing the, um, the route on Torregger, I was looking for another project in Patagonia. And uh, yeah, the east face of Fitzroy is maybe the most aesthetic and beautiful wall you, you see in Patagonia. You see it directly from the road when you arrive to Chalten. It's really outstanding. And there was this route opened by Rani di Lecco in 1976, which was the first route on this face and uh, which was still unrepeated. And the idea at the base of this project was to show that nowadays the Ragni di Lecco is still good, doing cool stuff, so still doing good climbs in Patagonia, but uh, of course with a modern style. So the idea was to climb this route alpine style, and besides that, the route was still full of metal ladders and ropes and all the gear which was used by the first ascenders. And actually, this, this stuff was uh, trash uh, in the wall right now. And so the idea was also to clean uh, the, the route from all these, uh, these things and make it a fantastic route to, to repeat and, uh, and free climb. 
Well, also for achieving this project, we, <laughs> we needed three years. <laughs> <laughs> but finally, last year we succeeded in, uh, in climbing this route, cleaning uh, basically everything, almost everything, and uh, free climbing as much as we could. Uh, still now, well, we have uh, several projects uh, regarding the Alps. Of course, the main summit, well, all the summit have been climbed, but there are still some big walls or hard lines to be climbed. Well, I spent several days and several summer to Matteo to open in Vendestock, for instance, to me. There are climbers of our group that have Dolomite in mind, uh, hold here, uh, to repeat our routes or to open routes as well. Then there is Mont Blanc. And uh, don't forget that not so many uh, guys have the possibility to take one month and a half, go to Patagonia, yeah, my, my next plans are uh, in the immediate future in, in Patagonia. I'm going to live in January. And um, this uh, year we want to go to a more uh, remote and less famous mountains, which is called the Cerro Mugajon. And uh, it's further down in Yellow Continental, not, uh, not, in the, um, not in the Chalten area, so more isolated and wild. Or not, not looking for a a uh, sure result, uh, an easy success. I'm looking for a real challenge. I, I'm not afraid of failing. I'm looking for big objectives. So I, if my success percentage is the same, it means that uh, uh, this is the first year I go, so <laughs> that I will have to come back for another two years a part of this to, to climb this mountain. But maybe, maybe now I started to learn something about Patagonia and uh, Maybe we have good luck so we can succeed that uh, first time.